The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James and on this show we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. In this episode we are talking about how to measure current. And I know some of you are already thinking, just get a DMM and you're done. So let's go in a different direction. Let's talk about how to measure current without breaking the circuit. In this episode, we're going to talk about high voltages and currents that could harm you or even potentially cause death. This video is not about safety specifically. Even though these measurements are relatively safe, you should still follow good safety guidelines. For example, only use one hand when touching circuits, turn circuits off before putting your hand in them, and make sure that someone is checking in on you from time to time. Be smart and be safe. This device measures voltage, resistance, continuity, and even diodes because it is a multimeter. But that isn't what I want to talk about. If you look really closely, you might notice it has a claw-like attachment at the top. This clamp works because of the magnetic part of the word electromagnetic field. Remember that current through a conductor creates a magnetic field. The size of that field is proportional to the amount of current. Current clamps make use of that property. For example, I set up the electronic load to sync 2.5 amps from the power supply. Clamping the meter around the wire causes the magnetic field to interact with the core material inside of the clamp, providing a measurement. But wait, the meter says 1.3 amps. If the meter has some energy built up, or it's magnetized, or there are stray fields, you must first zero it out before you can make a measurement. By hitting the relative button, the meter zeroes out and now measures correctly. We can also flip it around, press the hold button, and see that the meter was reading negative 2.4 amps. So in a DC circuit, you can tell the current's direction. And last, notice that the values change based on the wire's position inside the clamp. Ideally, you want the cable in the center. Let's try another DC example with this USB cable. The supply shows the tablet is drawing over one amp, but the meter reads almost zero. So what gives? Well, there are two problems with measuring this cable. First, it is shielded, and second, it has both the positive and negative wires. On the electronic load, we only clamp the positive wire. Since the USB cable has both, they create magnetic fields in opposing directions, which cancel each other out. Now, I'm not going to cut up this wire so that I can show you in this video, but I can show you what happens on the previous measurement if we clamp around both wires. And see, the meter reads about zero amps. So while you do not have to break the circuit to use a clamp meter, you may have to break up the cable. For AC measurements, it is the same story. This box is the controller for my super advanced reflow oven. Inside is a solid state relay controlled by an Arduino based board. The relay breaks the AC's hot wire so that it controls when the oven is on or off. If I place the clamp around the AC cord coming in, the meter shows about zero volts. No surprise, we have to get to either the hot or neutral wire. So inside of the controller, I clamp the hot and manually enable the relay. Now the meter shows that the oven draws about nine amps, which is about what I expect for this oven because I think it is rated for a thousand watts. But at this point, who knows? It's led a very hard life. So far, we have only measured a couple of amps, and quite frankly, we could have used a traditional DMM. But this clamp meter can measure up to 400 amps. So what do I have that draws 400 amps and won't require me to cut up a cable? Hmm, I know, but we're gonna go outside for this one. So here's my idea. A gas-powered automotive engine has an electric starter motor, which is powered by that 12-volt battery. And look at that, it has a cable just for the positive terminal. Perfect. Before I start the engine, there are two things I need to mention. First, remember a few minutes ago when I said that these clamps need the wire to be in the center of the clamp area? 
Well, as a one person show, I can't achieve that and start the car at the same time. And second, this Tenma model does not have a min-max function. It can hold a measurement, but it can't detect the maximum and just show that. So I pointed a camera at the screen and then to make it easier for you, I will flip it around. When the engine starts, the current jumps and then settles around 10 amps. Because the sequence was so fast, let's watch it again in slow motion. It looks like the peak was around 193 amps. However, at this point, I had started the engine a few times, so it was warm and easier to crank. Earlier, when I was testing the camera setup, I caught a peak of 358 amps. Either way, it would have been very difficult to break the circuit and have an inline meter measure that much current. The clamp DMM made it possible to verify that there is a dedicated feed for the starter motor and one for the separate accessories. After moving the clamp over to the other feed, you can see that the pre-start is around 1 amp and after the engine starts, the meter shows a negative reading, suggesting the alternator is charging the battery. Now, originally, I shot this clip where I turned on the radio, blower, seat heaters, and headlights without the engine running, which is pretty crazy because they were all drawing 50 amps from the car's battery. Now, if we fast forward a little bit to where I shut everything down and head it back inside, I totally missed something. It wasn't until I checked the footage that I noticed that there were still 12 amps being drawn right before I stopped the camera. I left my headlights on, like, seriously. So in this video, I really focused on this 10 millimeter with the built-in clamp. Before wrapping up, I wanted to mention that you can get both current transformers and Hall Effect sensor types for both traditional multimeters or for oscilloscopes. They'll come with banana plugs or BNCs for either of those. Cool thing is when you use these with an oscilloscope, you get far more resolution and a better look at what the current is doing over time. Like in this screenshot where I measured the voltage and current when a MOSFET turned on, but more on that in a future episode. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention with meters like this one is that the only measurement that is contactless is current. For the other DMM measurements like voltage or resistance, you still need to connect traditional probes. Remember that over on the Element 14 community, there are show notes for you that includes links to the products mentioned in this video. And by the way, that is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them. For now, it is time for me to get back to no contact current measurements around my electronics workbench. 